Let's flash back to earlier in 2021 when I got the Canon R6. I think the feature that I was most excited about as a filmmaker was log profiles, especially it was just C-Log 1 at the time, but I heard that they were gonna be adding C-Log 3 later on, which they did, which is pretty exciting. But um, I knew Log was a, a picture profile that was found in cinema cameras, and I was so excited that this was gonna be on the R6 because uh, I knew it would give me the maximum amount of dynamic range that I would want in my images to get the detail in the highlights and the shadows. Uh, and so when I first used Log on a short film called Waves, I found that there was a little bit of noise and some artifacting in my image. And I was kind of worried, is this a camera issue or was this a me issue? Was it how I was shooting? And through countless months of research and practice, I found out that it was definitely me that was the problem with that. And I think I've been able to find a way to correct those issues. And so I have three tips for you on how to expose your log footage properly and make sure that you're getting the least amount of noise and artifacting in your image. So let's dive into it. All right, so let's talk about tip number one, and this is definitely a shooting preference of mine, but it's worked really well for me in my shooting experience with log profiles and that is to turn off the Rec. 709 view assist feature on the camera. So, so why is this? Why, why did I turn this off? Well, let's talk about Rec. 709 and this view assist feature. So this feature uh, is going to pretty much add a uh, kind of a color grade to your image while you're viewing it. It's not gonna bake it into the image. You know, it will be a log uh, look to it when you put it on your computer, when you're color grading, but while you're filming in the process, you actually get to see what it will look like with a Rec. 709 uh, color grade. And Rec. 709, I'm just not a big fan of the look. It adds too much contrast, it blows out the highlights and sometimes I feel like I'm underexposing my image when I'm doing that, which I have had happen in the past. And I'll talk about why that's important in the next tip. But yeah, so I turned that feature off. So I'm just viewing the straight log data while I'm filming it. And I really like it because I get to see all the detail within the log profile. So uh, how well the shadows are holding up, how well the highlights are holding up, are they blown out, are they not? How are the mid-tones doing? I just see all this information. I can kind of start to plan out my color grade before I even get to my computer. Uh, so that's nice, it's already kind of getting me ready for that next step. And so that's why I prefer to shoot just viewing the straight log profile without the Rec. 709. So that was kind of my quick tip. That's my shooting preference. It may not work for you, but I wanted to pass off that idea if that's something you want to give a try out. But let's dive into tip number two. Tip number two has to do entirely with exposure and so you're gonna hear this a lot with log footage is that you want to overexpose your image by one stop specifically you want to overexpose your midtones by one stop that's gonna be the majority of the information in your image especially in the daytime in the nighttime you might have a little more shadow but still you're still gonna have midtones there and you want to overexpose them by one stop so why is this? Well, log footage is gonna naturally have a little more noise in the image. It's a flatter profile. There's gonna be a lot more detail coming in. So noise will make its way into the image. And so if you underexpose and you have that shadow information, you might wanna bring that up in post just to reveal that stuff. You don't wanna crush it too much in post. And so if you actually boost your shadows in an underexposed image, you're gonna reveal that noise more. Uh, you don't want that. You don't wanna have that noise. So by overexposing your midtones by one stop, you're actually revealing the detail in the shadow already, which then you can actually bring down in post and it still looks like a great image. You can recover those uh, mid-tone information and that highlight information as well. It'll be a really nice balanced image and will have less noise in the shadow because you don't have to kind of boost and reveal that. Uh, so yeah, so that's why you want to overexpose by one stop when you're filming in log. And I know if you have a monitor, then you can use false color or you can use waveforms to get that one-stop overexposure. But if you're just using the camera itself, uh, what's one way you can do that? Well, you could bring your camera closer to your subject and then press the shutter button on the camera, not the record shutter button, but the photo shutter button, and it will reveal uh, the exposure tool right there. So you can actually see if your midtones are one stop overexposed or more, or if you're underexposed as well. So you can utilize that to your advantage. And then once you do that, once you know that your, your midtones are uh, one stop overexposed, you can then move your camera to the position that you want to be for the scene uh, and work from there. I know that's kind of a little tr uh, tricky and sometimes you can't always do that, but when you can, I recommend doing that. And if you can't, if you're kind of running gun, uh, well, then you might just have to kind of guesstimate in a way, which I know kind of sucks. Uh, but, uh, you know, always bank on overexposing a little more when you're shooting in log. So that's tip number two. So let's talk about tip number three. So this also has to pertain to exposure, uh, but this is focusing primarily on your ISO. So with log profiles, they have something known as a base ISO. So for C-Log1, 
it's 400, and for C-Log3, it's 800. And so these base ISOs, you never wanna go below it because you're just gonna be losing that dynamic range that you get out of log. You always wanna stay either at that base ISO or go above it. But when you're going above it, you wanna have to follow the rule of doubling. And so uh, let's talk about this rule of doubling. What is this? Well, uh, I discovered this when I was filming my uh, test film Waves. So when I was uh, out there, so of course it was in the evening, it was around golden to blue hour, uh, I was uh, just kind of picking a ISO willy-nilly uh, rather than kind of picking the correct ISO that you should when you're kind of exposing for lower light situations. And so um, kind of to give an example, so of course when you're shooting maybe in daylight for C-Log3, the base ISO is 800, you want to utilize that. But let's say we're moving indoors for a scene and maybe I'm by the window but I still need to boost my ISO a little bit. Well, I don't have to just go to 1000 ISO. Uh, I actually would have to go to 1600 ISO, double that base ISO, because uh, that's actually gonna have the cleanest amount of noise in the image, surprisingly, cleaner than 1000. 1600 is gonna be better, and that's just because you're doubling that ba base ISO. You wanna kinda go based off of that. Um, and so yes, and so let's say now it's getting later in the evening, and I need to boost my ISO again. Well, you wanna to have to double 1600 into 3200, and then maybe it's getting even later, or now it's nighttime, and now let's do uh, 6400, and then after that it would be 12,800, which I don't think you should go past that at all. If anything, try and cut it off at 6400 if you have to. Uh, but yes, so that's the kind of the rule you have to follow, is then 800, to 1600, to 3200, to 6400, and so on. And then for C-Log1, it starts at 400, and then to 800, and the same pattern repeats. So those are gonna be the cleanest ISOs for noise in your image when you're filming in log profile. Again, go off the base ISO in terms of that. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how I've been kind of working with exposure in lower light situations when I'm filming. So yes, so that's my tips for filming in log profiles, specifically the Canon log profiles. I hope they're helpful. Let me know if they are down in the comments. I enjoy chatting with you all about your creations down there. Uh, so yeah, I have some cool content coming out your way, especially in the new year. We'll talk about that sometime soon. But until that video comes out, keep creating, keep having fun, and I'll see you soon.